So we have the title. Uh, of course, I'm talking about, about database. Uh, so yeah, we'll see it uh, in more details. For now, a couple of words to, uh, to present myself, to introduce myself. So uh, I actually almost learned Ruby uh, answering people, uh, the, uh, answering people uh, on uh, Stack Overflow. So it's, uh, it's, it was a very interesting pr process. Uh, I learned a lot uh, thanks to, through this uh, uh, journey. I really encourage you to, to, do, to do so. I am trying to finish the book, but I, I hope I'll, I'll manage some, someday. So it's part of my projects. Um, and yeah, in a nutshell, that's, that's enough for today. So ACID. ACID is great. I won't uh, explain the acronym for now. Uh, just yeah, to avoid any confusion. Of course, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to push you to uh, obscure uh, manners. So yeah, don't do drugs. Um, yeah, don't do drugs. And uh, whenever you code, uh, there are many uh, pitfalls, hiccups, and yeah, I recommend you to uh, pay attention to them. So of course, we uh, most of the time fight with bugs, and um, what can what, what's one of the vicious um, aspects of bugs uh, is uh, data inconsistency and because it can lead to even more bugs. So this is uh, something uh, special we have to, uh, to take care of. So you may or may not, I don't know, code uh, under bad influence. So I advise you against it. So basically some people are dealing callback pills. Uh, I really recommend you to avoid those. Uh, sometimes they just try to uh, remove the callback, so it, it's getting even more confusing. Really, beware, beware. Yeah, the, uh, in the video of, uh, of DHH, uh, the, from the screenshot uh, was uh, taken from, he, he talks about the, uh, the callback uh, rabbit hole. And really, uh, I, I hope you never fell into it. Uh, if so, I guess you picture it like I do uh, on the right hand side. Well, so uh, interestingly enough, uh, we all, most of, most of us use uh, Ruby on Rails uh, when we, whenever we use Ruby. And basically we receive a request and we send back a response. And most of the time, even though, yeah, uh, we, we try more and more to avoid uh, putting logic in controllers, but Still, it's, it's, it happens, I know. Shit happens as well. Uh, so the point is uh, we, we have to try to step back and realize, um, um, as we discussed already, as uh, Nick pushes with Trailblazer, uh, to abstract the business logic uh, within service objects or uh, actions or uh, operations. So it's an important step because uh, when we think about it, and uh, it's a, it was a great presentation from Uncle Bob, um, the, web, the web is just a channel. So um, your app isn't web, uh, the business logic uh, is better uh, abstracted out and it's easier to, um, to read and understand. Yeah, because uh, models actually they are things it's like ingredients in the recipe. So, of course, there are things, there are objects, and this, this, is, what's, uh, uh, this is why we like them. But uh, what we want to do uh, for the business is, uh, uh, is act, like do stuff with them. So, uh, models are things, like uh, ingredients, and uh, they are named out of uh, uh, things, like, I don't know, user is the most famous, of course. And service objects are named out of verbs because they, um, they describe the action. So it's the most important uh, split between the two because they're, they, they're, they're completely separate. So yeah, cook um, models are just ingredients in a recipe. So yeah, the service objects, they, the logic must be self-contained. And it's uh, necessary to um, handle the, both the happy and uh, the unhappy path because we, we know that shit happens and we are very responsible for uh, what happened, what we should do uh, in case something bad happened. So sorry, but happy path is a lie and we have to deal with failure. Um, yeah, so 
To me, there are two core principles uh, of a service object. First, it must do what it described. Uh, so most of the time it's a verb like, I know, uh, transfer money. So it has to do this. And um, more importantly, it has to ensure the data consistency. So on failure, it must leave a predictable state. So here we, we could uh, argue about the definition of a predictable state. But I would say that most of the time, so of course not always, but mo most of the time it's about reset everything. It's like, okay, it didn't happen. There was an error, I'm gonna push the error and, um, and I'm gonna reset everything and report uh, if something went bad. So the big, uh, the good old reset button. What is important is uh, once you um, try to model uh, your business logic uh, through service objects, uh, you may reuse them as different bricks, like, okay, I have my create, tran the create transfer, and maybe create transfer would be uh, called by another service object, uh, which is an, uh, on a an higher level. So this is something you, you, didn't, you probably didn't uh, intend to, uh, to use it to, uh, inside uh, something you couldn't uh, think before. But yeah, service objects like Lego bricks tend to assemble and uh, you may uh, end up in a situation where you call service objects from service objects. And again, uh, it's uh, the, what we described just before, which means we have to uh, roll back on error, uh, should be applied. So fortunately, we have the, uh, our database transaction, transactions. They are the, the, key, uh, the key topic of, uh, of this talk. And yeah, basically it begins from a begin and then depending on the outcome, it's either a commit or a, a rollback. Using uh, transactions in, in Ruby is that simple. So there, there could be uh, different uh, quirks or uh, special, uh, special params uh, we could discuss, but most of the time in a good old uh, Rails monolith with one single database, they end up uh, being like application <laughs> transaction uh, and then add your code within the block. So basically, if you're here, uh, the data integrity is ensured and there um, it means, yeah, if there was an exception, so we could discuss again about uh, is it good or not to use exceptions, but it's not the topic today. Um, but yeah, if you fail, then you, you know data has been rolled back. So uh, what, uh, what do, did this transaction uh, provide? So there are, two, uh, there are two letters from the ACID acronym. The, f the first one is atomicity, and uh, it means that the transaction is performed uh, completely or not at all like simple and consistency the data integrity is ensured before and after the transaction so it may include different uh, checks you do on the data level like uniqueness of stuff um, like foreign key uh, checks there are many constraints you can add but yeah thanks to uh, the C you are ensured uh, it happens and the rollback again clean state uh, in case of failure So who cares? Yeah, actually, it's pretty interesting to think about what happens if we don't have uh, either the A or either the, uh, neither the C. So without A, what happens? So without atomicity, we would end up uh, having to write scripts to clean, up, uh, to clean up after ourselves. So it would be very tedious and I bet uh, not, that, uh, uh, not that safe. And without consistency, again, we should write tons of scripts just to uh, ensure that uh, our data is, um, uh, is in the, the state we, we desire. So uh, hopefully uh, some people, uh, some very clever people did the uh, database for us and we can just rely on, on their great work. So we were talking about uh, nested service objects before and uh, of course we can have nested uh, transactions as well. And the same principle, well, we use uh, transactions inside service objects and 
Even though we, so even if we nest service objects, thanks to transactions, uh, we keep the integrity. But there, there is a small uh, condition to add, which is like here, this param. So requires new true. It's very important to, to add uh, this uh, little parameter. Um, the, the Rails documentation explains it very well. Um, but yeah, basically, if you want some details, check uh, the, the Rails uh, documentation or ask me uh, just uh, after, after the talk. Um, as, a rule of thumb, as a rule of thumb, just, you could just use requires new true uh, all the time. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a safe, uh, it's a, one of the safe params you can use and if ever your service object is wrapped win within another uh, but you didn't plan uh, in the first place, then well, it's, uh, it's ready. So as a rule of thumb, just always use uh, requires new true. And yeah, this is documentation. Uh, so transactions hiccups. So yeah, as I said before, um, what we want to do in case of error is uh, to roll back, of course, and to report errors as well. But if we say, oh, some error happened, so I'm going to just save it in database. Yeah, but we are in the transaction, so what now? So you can't. So um, I'm going to show you some uh, like little techniques I'm using uh, to, to perform this. Um, and basically, it relies on the PubSub uh, pattern, uh, which is provided by a gem uh, called Whisper. The, so basically, it, it consists in creating some listener, and it will uh, li uh, listen to, to um, events. Here, the event is add log. Uh, within our service object here, um, we would broadcast on error and re-raise. So what is broadcasting? It's just calling broadcast, which is provided by uh, this module. And then the, the trick, actually, is just to pass a function. Well, a block, uh, as we say in Ruby, but it's just a function. And well, this won't be evaluated uh, at the moment. Uh, it must be called to be evaluated. And that's uh, actually where the trick lives. So in, the, in whatever, uh, in another service object or in a controller, uh, you, you can use uh, the whisper subscribe. So this is uh, the, uh, the subscription part. So here you have the uh, publication broadcast, and here you have the subscription. So everything happening with the, within uh, every event uh, happening inside the block would be recorded by, um, uh, by the listeners. So you can add uh, as many as you wish. And in the end, uh, in case of failure, because I know uh, my listener is a failure error. I'm just triggering comments. And triggering, triggering the comments in this case is just a matter of uh, looping all the comment blocks and calling them. So that's pretty much it. So we can see the safe zone here is uh, the service object. And outside of the safe zone, we have uh, our, uh, our pub, pub sub uh, mechanism. Uh, where we can um, perform different actions uh, to, to, to be reported in case of errors. When I'm talking about safe zone, it's really important, and it also means that whenever you are not in the safe zone, well, you are not in the safe zone. It's very obvious, though it's important to have a very simple uh, stuff inside these uh, different procs, uh, because you don't want an exception to happen at this stage. Uh, so now we're talking about background jobs because most of the time uh, we need them and uh, they are all part of the uh, service object. Um, if we use something like a delayed job, which is now recommended against, but for the sake of the demonstration, let's say you are using delayed job, uh, it uses a database, so it's like super uh, easy. Um, you are gonna save the jobs in the, in the database if ever there is an error, it, we, it would be wiped out um, uh, because it won't be committed uh, thanks to the transaction mechanism. It's like dead simple. It obeys the ACID rule and uh, yeah, it's easy. And why is it that easy? It's because uh, of the I of the uh, ACID acronym, which is uh, isolation, uh, which means that uh, um, the, the process uh, watching the different um, 
jobs to process won't be uh, won't have access to uh, to to the job uh, because the different um, uh, elements in the transactions are invisible from the outside of the transaction. So what if we have we don't have any isolation? So we would enter crazy mechanisms uh, where we have to um, to manage uh, the different locks. Uh, and yeah, I prefer not even talk. Uh, yeah, think about it because those mechanisms could be terrible and very uh, error prone. So, what if we have Redis backend jobs, which we most of the time use now? Uh, it's like a de facto solution for most of us. So, of course, if you start enqueuing stuff um, inside the service object and the service object rollbacks then uh, something you wanted to do with uh, the object inside the worker uh, will be triggered, but the object doesn't uh, exist in the, in the database, so you are in trouble. So there are two options. The first one is to start uh, programming defensively, which is like terrible to read and terrible to think about, like, does my argument exist? Uh, is it in the state I, am, I expect? So yeah, I would, against, uh, I would, um, uh, I would not use the, this kind of path. Um, yeah, so just be be aware of this hiccup. So again, uh, one solution uh, could be to use the same pub sub pattern which we, we saw before. So just um, just say you want to um, uh, to enqueue some uh, some job, and this listeners must be uh, triggered after the um, the service object, but it's a, a case of success in here, so we wouldn't uh, trigger it inside the rescue, of course. So it would be, they should be triggered here. So the whole point is my transaction, my database transaction uh, provides me uh, with a safe haven. So we leverage it, we leverage it uh, as much as we can. And for everything outside of the scope, we try to push and to push outside. Um, th we have another problem, which is uh, different uh, API calls. Um, so there, are, there, there is a very great talk I recommend you to watch uh, from Katie McCaffrey. Um, it lasts an hour, so I won't try to even sum up it there, but I recommend you to watch it. The, the, whole, um, um, the whole logic be behind it is, of course, we don't have uh, transactions uh, be in, inside the API environments but we could uh, think about compensating requests. So basically, if I do something, I could plan in advance uh, uh, an API request to undo it. So it's almost the same mechanism, and um, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's a way to perform uh, transaction um, philosophy to APIs. So how would we do it? Um, actually, here, the trick is, to say, okay, so I'm like basically I'm booking something, and if it succeeds, and only if it succeeds, I have to enqueue the compensation requests, and if ever uh, the whole um, if ever the whole service object fails uh, in the rescue, we have to trigger the um, uh, the the, yeah, the the listeners which um, contain compensating requests. So it's, just, it's the same philosophy. Um, uh, the transaction is uh, wrapped, it's uh, built in our systems, and for external APIs, uh, we can think about this, um, uh, this uh, pattern. Yet, um, it's, uh, it really depends on the API you're using, and uh, not all are uh, reliable enough, because you, there are some constraints, you, you, yeah, you need to have like a solid API in front of you. Basically, one of the criteria, as Sergey mentioned before, is uh, the hidden potency. So basically, if you try to post twice uh, because you had a timeout in the first place and you don't know what happened, you just post again because you just really want the stuff to be created. Um, it must not create twice the same object. So you need a system of unicity keys. And if the create actions uh, happens twice, then uh, it, it must not uh, create another record. It, just must, it must just return the one which existed before. So idempotency is one of the rules. 
again, because we have no, uh, we have no guarantee that what we trigger uh, in our code would be received by uh, the external API in the same uh, order. Uh, ideally, well, the API must obey uh, other rules. Basically, it must uh, be delay-proof. So what, what do I mean? I mean that if ever request one, which is create booking, uh, is sent and say, I want to book a plane and I want to book a car, uh, but actually uh, the car uh, isn't available, so I'm just canceling everything. So uh, I, I try to book uh, the plane and I know uh, just afterwards that uh, I don't want to, to proceed with the booking anymore. So I'm sending the request to the API, create the booking, and second, um, yes, just cancel it. Yet, uh, because of networks and the erratic uh, behaviors, um, the cancel may arrive before the create. And the API must, must handle it properly, which means, okay, I have to cancel something which doesn't exist, so maybe someone will want to create it somehow later. So actually the cancel will have to create and cancel, which is a little weird when you think about it, but when you are uh, in front of real life, it just makes sense. So there are constraints uh, with uh, the database, uh, with the API um, behaviors. Um, again, I recommend you to watch uh, the, the video. The, the link is, is in the presentation. So uh, it's, yeah, it's very uh, inspirational. So to, to recap, well, we have no choice, we have to handle errors because uh, errors would lead to other errors and um, yeah, we, we, it's our duty as uh, engineers to ensure uh, the data cons consistency. Uh, of course, there is a big debate in the uh, Ruby community, should we use exceptions, or should we use uh, like different ways to, uh, to, to guarantee our flow control. There are very strong opinions, and it's quite funny to explore. So of course, like always, uh, nobody's right. Just do as you feel and as your team uh, decided. Um, it's uh, just another debate. And I'm now open for questions. Thank you. OK. Thank you very much. Is there? OK. Nice. <laughs> Thank you for the talk. Um, you were showing uh, the PubSub uh, slides, and I didn't quite understand how you subscribe to some event. With goodwill. Uh, that's great. <laughs> goodwill hunting. Make an effort, please. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So, no, it's be actually after. Yeah. Too much acid. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, 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 so here we are. So I'm relying here on the whisper gem. And so you have here a subscribe block, which is thread safe. And this subscribe block will take all the listeners uh, past here. So you can add as many as you want. But where do you define who is, I mean, where do you define the listeners? Is that something dynamic at runtime, or is that something you decide at compile time? Um, this, so I'm going to talk about what I do uh, in my apps. Basically, I have an around action block uh, for my, all my controllers. And inside, I just uh, wrap. So basically, my around action would be this. Uh, and with a yield inside of the uh, service object call, which would yield the action, and then I would uh, trigger the commands uh, after the action. So it's not uh, on, compi on, yeah, on, on execution time, well, it's in, during the execution phase of the request, because uh, I generally use it uh, in, uh, around actions in controllers. But, but so the, it makes sense, so the, the listeners are basically like, what used to be callbacks in... Yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. And what is uh, actually super cool is that because you can use, it them, use them in uh, the around action of the controller, you can have the whole context. So basically, you can have the current user. Uh, and it's very convenient. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, there is a couple of hands. Uh, thank you for your talk. So um, the question is, you mentioned the delay proof uh, like problem yep. uh, with API. Yeah, so do you have any like solutions in mind? Uh, how, how do you deal with that? So actually, these slides come hand in hand with this one. Uh, if you start from the principle, you have a, a unique identifier for each request, like you do when you use payments in Stripe. Um, whenever you are here and you receive the cancel, you can create uh, the object representing the, the cancel with the unique identifier. Mark it as cancel, whatever uh, way it must be. And then when the create uh, happens, because uh, we saw before two create in a row should not create, uh, it would be uh, matched by unique identifier, and then uh, you know you have, you, you have nothing to create and actually no state to change. So, so you don't have any like library or something in mind to easily like solve this this problem. Uh, I, there is no particular library. Um, I really recommend. Um, I'll add the uh, different uh, links to uh, this presentation. Uh, there, there are uh, great um, blog posts about uh, ACID, about the way to uh, use the database properly, how to create unique identifiers as well. Um, of course, I forgot the name of the blog, but I I'll post them. It's, Thank yeah, you. it's very uh, insightful. OK, another hand here, and then it goes to. OK, thank you for the talk. It was really great one. Well, I have a question about database and the nesting. And could you please show the slide? If uh, sure. So, nah. this one? Well, yeah. Or my this one? Yeah, this one. So basically, we have uh, nested transactions when we have uh, nested services, right? Yeah. So isn't, well, for me, it feels quite like there might be happen a deadlock, and if your process, well, if your pattern solves this, I'm just wondering. Just for me, it feels like there can be a deadlock when we have a nested transaction and the both transactions are locked on a single row, and both of them can proceed to until the unlock happens, and they keep bumping in each other. So, might this happen or not? Um. I mean, I've never faced the issue, so it's complicated to, yeah, theoretically, it could, of course, and the longer the transaction and the longer the likeliness, you're right. Um, yeah, I've, there is no, there is no mag magic uh, recipe to, to provide here, uh, but of course you have to try and minimize stuff. Uh, yeah, it could happen. Hopefully, I never, or, or, or unfortunately, I'm, I'm not sure. I never reached the scale where I needed to uh, really optimize this. Um, but yeah, the nested trans transaction just served me well so far. Well, just we should lower the level of nestedness. Just say, I, I guess. Yeah, but most of the time I got like three levels max. Uh, it could happen more, but uh, yeah, I, I haven't. Uh, I didn't have the uh, um, the use case for now. Okay, thank you for talk and thank you for answer. Thank you. There we go. Hi, uh, thanks for talk. Um, I guess I, I missed that. Can you uh, um, remind the, your opinion about uh, error handling? Uh, do you prefer uh, some to raise exceptions or to use uh, control flow, uh, some kind of that? Maybe. So. Um, I tend to believe that uh, exceptions are uh, just for ex exceptional situations and we used to make a stupid joke uh, after a few drinks with Nick about the flow control because we embraced actually the same pattern. Uh, there is the railway programming where you have the success and uh, um, error path. Um, so uh, it's implemented in Trailblazer now. It has been uh, for a few years in this jam as well. Um, so I, yeah, I just use. Of course, it's silly, but it's it's a jam I needed, so I did it. Uh, I use my stuff for now, and yeah, I prefer um, uh, I prefer not to use exceptions. But yes, the debate is infinite. So okay, and. Um 
So no more questions we have. Benjamin, thank you very much for your talk.